Hi friends, I'm Nick Komen and we have an exciting new class for you. In this Dragonfly Creative class, Beginning Einstein, we'll teach you how to achieve amazing results. Einstein provides incredibly vivid, complex results with a minimum amount of fuss. The great thing about this is the subtle, intricate textures you're able to achieve with this method of dyeing. My good friend and fellow dye artist, Chase Wong, will be joining us. That way we'll be able to give you an absolutely amazing experience. So if you're ready to learn and get creative, I look forward to seeing you in class soon. Hi there, I'm Nick Komen with Dragonfly Creative and today we're going to do beginning ice dyeing. But first what I want to do is I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, Chase Wong. Chase and I have been dyeing together for years and we wanted to give you today some of our tips and tricks on getting the best results with your ice dye. First though, we need to talk about some of the materials that you're gonna need with your ice dyeing adventures. First of all, you're gonna need fabric that is 100% cotton, linen, rayon. You're gonna need a cellulose-based fabric, so that means a plant-based fabric, and you take as much of that as you want. A little teeny bit of polyester or some little bit of spandex in it is okay, but you don't want a whole lot, otherwise the dye won't take. Now we're going to talk about the actual dyes that we're going to be using. These dyes are called Procyon MX dyes, and these are available at a wide variety of vendors across the country. We usually use ProCam or Dharma Trading Company, or we also get them from Custom Colors. And you can also get them locally at your local craft store in smaller amounts from the Jacquard Company. So that's the dyes, but you want MX Procyon dyes. Those dyes are intended for cellulose-based fabrics. Some of the other stuff that you're gonna need are little things like a spoon and a sifter. We like to use these little teeny tea strainer type sifters. These are great for using when you're putting the dye on the fabric. It lets you control the dye a little more as well as uh, keeping the dye from coming out too fast. One of the other things you're gonna need is a selection of rubber bands. And most of the time with ice dyeing, we aren't using the rubber bands as a resist or, or to block the dye from the fabric, but what we're using them for is just to hold the fabric together in one place so that the ice and the dye can do its work. Another thing that you might want that we use often is a spray bottle with soda ash solution in it. I'll talk about the soda ash in just a minute. The reason we might want a spray bottle with soda ash solution in it is because I live in Colorado. In southwest Colorado it's very dry. So the fabric tends to dry out really rapidly and oftentimes it's easier to work with a slightly damp fabric. So instead of dampening it with regular water, I dampen it with soda ash. Okay? The other thing you're going to need, let's talk about soda ash. Soda ash is an alkali-based product. It's actually sodium carbonate, and it's a very close, close cousin to sodium bicarbonate, which is baking soda. But soda ash is available to you through Dharma Trading Company, all of the dye uh, houses that I've talked about, uh, ProCam, and uh, it's also available at places like Home Depot and make sure you're getting soda ash. And then you can also get it at your local uh, swimming pool supply store because this is used in swimming pools to bring up the alkalinity, balance out the acidity and the alkalinity in swimming pools. So soda ash is a necessary thing. And then of course, ice. We're gonna need a lot of ice. Ice acts as the water in this kind of process. So how does ice dyeing differ from regular tie dyeing? With ice dyeing, the thing that we're doing is we're putting ice on the fabric and then sprinkling dye powder on top of that ice as opposed to mixing the dye powder into a liquid solution prior to putting it on the fabric. 
And what that does is that allows us for a much greater variation in color and a richer texture. But normally, you would mix water with the dye, and then the dye would form a, a solid, uniform color. With ice dyeing, since we're using the powder, it will break out into the colors that are combined to make those individual colors. There are only about 18 different colors of pure dye, which means no other color is added to make it. So there are about 18 of those. All of the rest of the dye colors that you find are mixed with one color, mixed with another, mixed with another, several colors, a lot of times a number of colors, mixed together so that when you put it in liquid, it gives you a base color. When we're ice dyeing, we sprinkle that powder on top of the ice and all of those different particles of dye colors will come apart and they'll flow down the ice and into the fabric. So you're going to get some of the original color that you thought was going to be in that dye, and then you're going to get some of the combinant colors that happen that make up the overall dye color, okay? How does the dye stick to the fabric? This is a question that's really important, and it really makes a huge difference. So one of the things that we use to make the dye stick to the fabric, if you will, well, actually the only thing in this particular method is soda ash. Soda ash is what we talked about that you can get from the dye houses or your local swimming pool supply dealer. So soda ash is a chemical that, like I said, is an alkali base, but what we do is we soak the fabric that we're going to dye in the soda ash first. And normally it's about a heaping half cup per gallon, about nine tablespoons, okay? And that's about a heaping half cup. So we mix that soda ash with hot water and mix it up. You need to stir the entire time you're mixing that soda ash into the water. And then when you're done mixing that soda ash and the water up, I usually mix about five gallons at a time. So that's about two and a half cups of soda ash per five gallons of warm water. Then what I'll do is I'll take my fabric and I'll put my fabric into the soda ash and I'll let it set for anywhere from 20 minutes to overnight. I've actually gone away and left them for several weeks and they seem to have been okay. After I do that, I take them out I wring them dry so that they're just damp dry, okay? At that point, we're ready to manipulate the fabric, add the dye, and then put the ice on. Or we can put the ice on and then add the dye. At this point, I'm going to have Chase show you how we do our basic fold, and that basic fold we call a crumple. And this is an all-purpose fold. It's great for garments. It's great for quilt fabric. You can do solid color. You can do multiple color. And depending on how tightly you crumple it or how loosely is the amount of uh, texture that you're going to get on the overall end fabric. So right now, I'm going to have Chase show you how to go ahead and do our basic fold. The basic fold is called a crumple. And this is good for fabric used for quilting, for garments, for home deck. It's a very textural fabric. <clears throat> you can do it with color. You can do it with uh, single color, multiple colors. You can do it dark or light, but it's going to give you a great deal of texture. And depending on how tightly or how loosely you crumple the fabric, you're going to get different textures. It's all about experimentation. Chase, you want to show us how to do that crumple? This is a one, one yard um, fabric. I already pre-cut and pre-soak. All I need to do now is to crumple it. So what I need to do here, choose as an area you are comfortable with. It can be like on the side or in the middle, on the corner, but I'll choose usually from the corner. So I just start gathering all the fabric with your fingers, with all your fingers, and Make sure you gather it tight because that's how um, when you dye it and you have a very, very good result. And on my side here, I have a bunch of 
rubber bands. What I use the rubber band for is to make sure that the shape that I have started with will stay and not um, open up again. So I'm going to start with one rubber band. You can use as many rubber bands as you want as long as the whole um, fabric is already put in place. Okay. And if you're doing this with a friend, you can actually tag team the fabric here. So it's like you just have one person hold it down and together and the other person can put the rubber bands around it. There you go. So make sure that the fabric is not forming into like a circular ball. I want it, you should make, have it like a little more flat. So in that way, the dye will be easier to penetrate into the fabric so you get a better result. So right here, I still have something sticking out there. So I want to put it more as a circular. So I'm going to put more rubber bands. So the way that fabric can go into the ball is if the rubber bands aren't big enough or if the rubber bands are too tight. So if the rubber bands are too tight, what it's going to do is it's going to cause the fabric to buckle. You want that fabric to lay flat, right? So yeah, exactly. So right now, as you can see, it's already tight together and um, it's, it's nicely formed in the ball and down you can put in the, um, the bucket. We got this shoebox bucket you can get from Costco or 99 cent store. So after you put your rubber banded, soaked and formed fabric into your shoebox, you're going to go ahead and you're going to put the dye on. Now we have a couple different ways that we like to add dye. You can either add dye prior to putting the ice on, or you can add dye after you put the ice on. The difference being is that if you put the dye on first, prior to putting the ice on, you're going to have much more control over where that dye goes. So if you really do want a specific pattern or stripes um, or spots, whatever it is you want, if you want something very specific in a place, now keep in mind this is dye and it's wet and specific is sort of a general thought process. So keep that in mind too. But if you do want specific color placement, you're going to put the dye on first and then put the ice on top of that. So if you want to do a piece where everything just sort of runs together and is beautifully modeled and mixed up, then you're going to go ahead and just put the dye on the ice after you put the ice on top of the fabric. Okay? So what we're going to demonstrate is putting the dye on top of the ice because that's the easiest thing to do and it's the best way to learn. And you get to see what that dye does on top of that ice. So what we're gonna do now is take some ice and put that on top of the fabric. Thank you for watching this Dragonfly Creative class. If you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.